How are you, my friends? In this uh, video, I'm presenting seven old exams questions related to advanced trigonometric equations from lecture 26 of the pre-calculus course. Just to remind you guys here, this lecture 26 and their questions are related also to lecture number 25, where we have basic trigonometric equations, little simpler. Let's start question number one. Solve the trigonometric equation cosecant squared of theta equals cotan of theta plus three. Now let's try to make the whole equation same function so that we can factor it easily. So we can use this formula cosecant squared of theta is equal one plus cotan squared of theta. Replace it there on the left side. One plus cotan squared of theta is equal this one. Bring everything on one side, rearrange it, and then we have cotan squared of theta minus cotan of theta minus two is equal to zero. We can factor cotan of theta plus one, cotan of theta minus two equal to zero. Then the first one here, we get cotan of theta is equal to minus one, cotan of theta is equal to two. Cotan of theta is equal to two, which means tan theta is half. Now, cotan of theta is equal minus one which means also tan of theta is equal to minus one. So theta can be minus pi over four plus k pi because the period for tan and cotan is pi. The second one, tan of theta is equal half. This is not a special angle. So we can write theta tan inverse of half plus k pi where k is integer. So these are the solutions. Second one, find the sum of all the solutions of this equation, tan of x plus square root of three is equal to secant of x. See the difference between this and number one. Here we don't have any squared. So we cannot use all these trick formulas with this squared, remember? So what can we do? Square both sides. And remember to check at the end. Square all this, square all that. Now this is like a plus b, I mentioned this many times, a plus b all squared becomes a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So this becomes tan squared of x plus 2 square root of 3 tan of x plus 3 is equal secant squared. Now we can use our trig formulas. We know secant squared of theta is equal 1 plus tan squared of theta. So instead of this one on the right side, I can write one plus tan squared of x. Then the whole equation becomes tan of x. So this is the equation from the last slide. We have secant squared, remember? Then I put, instead of secant squared, I put one plus tan squared. See, tan squared is canceled. And then take three on the other side becomes minus two. Divide by two square root of three. The two will be canceled. And now we have one minus minus one over square root of three. This is tan of x after we simplify everything in the equation. So the reference angle here is pi over six, which is 30 degrees. Tan is negative, which quadrant? Remember, we need the solutions from zero to two pi. So this is in quadrant two, tan is negative and quadrant four. In quadrant two, since we have the reference is pi over six, so it will be pi minus pi over six, which is five pi over six. In quadrant four, it will be two pi minus the reference, which will be 11 pi over six. So how many solutions we have? Two. Now we have to check each proposed solution. As we can see from the last slide, the proposed solutions are x equals five pi over six and x equals 11 pi over six. Let's check these two proposed solutions in the original equation. So we put five pi over six in the tan and the secant. See, this is the original equation. And then this will be not correct. Minus one over square root of three plus square root of three cannot be equals to minus two over square root of three. And this will check. So the only solution is 11 pi over six. You can go here slowly, please to make sure these answers are, this is correct, this is not correct. So we need the sum, the sum is the only solution, 11 pi over six. Now find the product of all the solutions of this equation, sine 
of x cosine of 2x minus cosine of x sine of 2x is equal to square root of 3 over 2 in this interval 0 to 2 pi. Now, clearly by looking at the equation here, we can remember sine nu cosine v minus cosine nu sine v. This is, if you go backward, it will be sine u minus v. This is sine of the difference. So you can go back. So directly on the left side, we can write sine x minus 2x, which is minus x. And we know the sine function is odd sine of minus theta is minus sine theta, so I can take the minus out. Remember, if this is cosine of minus x, it will be cosine of x because cosine is an even function, remember that. So minus sine of x is equal to this, multiply with minus, we get sine of x is equal to minus square root of three over two. Now we ask, the sine function is negative, where? Quadrant three and quadrant four. Look at the value here, square root of three over two for the sine. So the reference angle will be pi over three, which is 60. So in quadrant three, the angle will be pi plus pi over three, which is four pi over three. Quadrant four, it will be two pi minus the reference. So it will be five pi over three. So in the given interval from zero to two pi, we have four pi over three, five pi over three. If we need the product, multiply them 20 pi squared over nine. Find the number of the solutions of this equation, tan theta over two minus sine theta equal to zero over the interval zero to two pi. This is half angle, tan of half angle minus sine of theta. That's a nice question actually. Now we know the formula for tan u over two, you know this formula here, half angle, sine of u divided by one plus cosine of u. So I can replace all this tan theta over two by sine theta divided by one plus cosine theta. The equation has all thetas. You see the equation has thetas minus sine theta. Let's take sine theta here, common factor. So sine theta in the bracket, we have one over one plus cosine theta minus one. So this is equal to zero or this is equal to zero. See, this is equal to zero, that's easy. Sine theta is equal to zero, what are the angles? Theta zero, and theta is equal to pi. We will see now why pi is rejected. Now let's take this one is equal to zero. So I can take this expression here equals to one. So one over this is equal to one. Cross multiply one plus cosine theta is equal to one. So cosine theta will be zero. What are these angles? Theta will be pi over two and theta will be three pi over two. Now, if you replace here pi in the theta here, you see, tan theta over two is undefined. This is tan 90, undefined. So this one is rejected. So the solutions are zero pi over two, three pi over two. So the number of solutions is three. Solve the inverse trigonometric equation, cosine inverse of x plus two sine inverse three over five equals pi over two. I gave you the idea here in the lecture and the idea is here written again. Isolate the term with x and take cosine of both sides if the function is cosine. If there is here tan inverse of x, we take tan on both sides, etc. So I can leave cosine inverse of x is equal pi over two minus the other term, minus two sine inverse three over five. Take cosine on both sides here cosine, cosine of both sides. Now on the left side, we have a cancellation property here. Cosine, cosine inverse of x is x. On the right side, we can use the co-function. Cosine pi over two minus the theta is equal sine theta. And remember now theta is all this, including the two. So two times all this, that's the theta here, you see? Pi over two minus the angle. All this angle now is two sine inverse three over five. That's theta here. So now what is X? X is equal to sine of two sine inverse three over five. So from the last slide, we have X equals sine of two sine inverse three over five. Let me take 
only sine inverse three over five as angle B. Here, let B, capital B, as an angle, sine inverse three over five, and there is a two. So, which means X will be sine of two B. So this is angle B. Take here sine on both sides, we get sine of B three over five, which is Y over R, so I can find M here. So this is M like X. But I did not put here X only, just I put M here. So cosine of the B, the adjacent, which is the M over the R hypotenuse, or maybe X over R, but X means here the adjacent, not this X. All right, so this is sine of B, cosine of B. Now what do I need? X, X equals sine of 2B. Now sine of 2B by the formula, sine of double angle 2 sine B times cosine of the B, 2 times 3 over 5 times 4 over 5, which will be 24 over 25. This is the value for X. Question number six, little tricky question. Solve the inverse trig equation, pi minus four arc tan X is equal four pi. I think we need to rearrange the equation first. So let's take pi on the other side, becomes three pi. Now divide by minus four. So arc tan of X minus three pi over four. What arc tan of X means tan inverse of X is equal to minus three pi over four. And this is impossible. Why? because tan inverse is defined between minus pi over two to pi over two, if you remember in the inverse lecture. So the tan inverse goes from minus pi over two to pi over two in quadrant one and four. So tan inverse of X cannot be, cannot be minus three pi over four. So we say no solution for this equation. Let's solve the trick equation here. 2 cosine 3t minus 1 is equal to 0. This is a little long maybe. Find all the solutions of the equation. We have no condition in part A. Remember we need t. t is like theta or whatever. And here remember if we have a double angle half angle we take all this as x. Let's find the solution in the interval 0 to 2 pi. Find, the, find them. Find the actual solution. So as usual here, let me make the equation simple. So I say let 3t is equal to x. So I rearrange the equation cosine of the x equals half, which is so easy. Cosine of x is equal half. What is x? Now the cosine is positive here. So it will be in quadrant one and in quadrant four. So pi over three, where the cosine is half, and five pi over three plus two k pi, because there is no condition. This is part A now. So every x is three t, so I put here three t is equal pi over three plus two k pi. And instead of this x, I put three t, five pi over three plus two k pi. Let's divide by three here, divide by three, divide by three, everything to get t. So divide by three here, we get t. Divide by three here, we get pi over nine. This is two k pi over three. Another t, we have five pi over nine plus two k pi over three, where k is integer. Let's continue now to find. So these are the general solutions here from the last slide, pi over nine. Remember here, you see pi over nine and then five pi over nine plus two k pi over three. Now we need the solution from zero to two pi. So let's put k equal to zero. Then the first t will be pi over nine, five pi over nine. If you put k equals to one, then you have to add here pi over nine plus two pi over three multiplied by three up and down. So you get seven pi over nine. From here you get 11 pi over nine. Take k two. So it will be pi over nine plus four pi over three multiply up and down by three. You get 13 pi over nine, 17 pi over Nine. Now, if you take any value for k greater than three or equal to three, then the angle is outside this interval from zero to two pi. So only solutions we have, the values of the t, remember pi over nine in this interval, 
pi over 9 again, 5 pi over 9, 7 pi over 9, 11 pi over 9, 13 pi over 9, 17 pi over 9. And these are the answers for other examples. Guys, if you want to see other examples and the rules and everything we said, different equations, you can see the video on pre-calculus course, lecture number 26, advanced trig equations. And lecture 25 is the basic trig equations. Equations simpler than these. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. I hope I can see you in another video with another topic. Thank you very much for listening.